Hello YouTube, this is Hawkman66. Uh, I'm making this video in reply to a lot of those people out there that are uh, against the whole Lordship Salvation issue. I've been seeing a lot of videos out there and what I notice is a lot of people out there that are making these videos are distorting what Lordship Salvation really is. Uh, I see a lot of comments talking about uh, that you can go on living your life after you become saved. Uh, you can be as the world is and not care about uh, righteousness or holiness or anything like that. And I've, I've talked to a few people and the people that I've talked to are very uh, stubborn and they don't want to hear anything that we have to say. They want to block us or or spam channels and all that stuff. So I just thought I'd make this short little video and uh, just leave it at that. Put my opinion up there and I'm sure I'll hear a lot of a lot of flack for it, but here it goes. A uh, couple of verses that I came across on this subject um, I wanted to, to go through. Romans 8.29 For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to become conformed to the image of his Son, that he would be the firstborn among many brethren. Now, God is predestining a people for himself to become conformed to the image of his Son. Now, if God predestines something to happen, it's going to happen. The goal of God's predestinate, predestinated purpose is for his own that they would be made like Jesus Christ. Now, the prize is the upward call, as in Philippians 3.14. Paul says, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. The goal is Christ-likeness here and now. The prize is Christ-likeness in heaven. So, if we look at that verse, those two verses I just read, God has predestined the people to become conformed to, uh, to the image of his Son. So, if you're saying that uh, people can become a Christian and still live like the devil, then we got some serious problems here. Predestination means nothing if that's the case. Also, another verse that kind of stuck with me too. I have a few of them. Uh, 1 John 2.29 If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone also who practices righteousness is born of him. Now, this is the result. Uh, it's, it's, the, it's a way to display the characteristics of God's righteousness. To affirm that righteous living is the proof of being born again. I'm not saying that you do righteous acts to become born again. I'm saying that once you become born again, your life is going to change. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Those who are on Christ are a new creature. The old has passed away, the new has come. I don't, I don't see how uh, it can be any more clear than that. And then I know this uh, passage is... Uh, very controversial. I know that goes a lot of people go back and forth with this with this verse, but James two twenty six, for just as the body without the spirit is dead, so also faith without works is dead. Once again, I'm not saying that you work for your salvation. I'm saying that the faith that we have in Jesus Christ is a living active faith. It's a faith that will produce good works. Jesus said you will know them by their fruits. A bad tree cannot produce good fruit, and a good tree cannot produce bad fruit. So, I just don't see what all the confusion is. When we turn to Christ for salvation from our sins, we are simultaneously turning away from the sins that we are asking Christ to save us from. If that were not true, our turning to Christ for salvation from sin could hardly be a genuine turning to Him for tr our trusting in Him. So again, repentance and faith is required. I'm not saying that that's what saves you. I'm saying that if if you are truly born again, you will repent and trust in Jesus Christ. 
It's, cl it's clearly contra contrary to the New Testament evidence to speak about the possibility of having true saving faith without having any repentance for sin. It's also contrary to the New Testament to speak about the possibility of someone accepting Christ as Savior, but not as Lord. If that means simply depending on him for salvation, but not committing oneself to forsake sin and to be obedient to Christ from that point on. Now when, now when Jesus invites sinners, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, he immediately adds, take my yoke upon you and, I, and learn from me. That's in Matthew 11, 28 and 29. To come to him includes taking his yoke upon us, being subject to his direction and guidance, learning from him and being obedient to him. If we are unwilling to make such a commitment, then we have not truly placed our trust in him. There's an Old Testament example, uh, and it's Isaiah 55, 6 through 7. Seek the Lord while, we ha while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, that he may have mercy on him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Again, I'm not saying that you have to... to do good deeds to be saved. These are things that will happen after the new birth, after the new the, the old heart has been regenerated. So I know that there's going to be people out there who are going to leave all kinds of comments. I welcome them, but please be uh, considerate of you know this doesn't have to be an ignorant debate. Um, these were just some thoughts that I had on my mind. I wanted to get them out there. And I'm interested to hear what, what people think about the whole situation. Thanks, and God bless.